Full disclosure, there are no MVPs. I just made this up. But there are people in these units who personify the units more than others. And to be honest, Ibn Battuta is the MVP of Unit 1 and Unit 2. But I decided that no one can win the MVP award twice, so the MVP of the Networks of Exchange is Matsa Musa. The Around the AP World in 80 Days Countdown was not developed by the staff here at Freemanpedia to waste your time. I know for a fact you went over Matsa Musa, so I'm not gonna spend 10 minutes on the guy. Instead, let's pick through his life story and see how it connects to the networks of exchange themselves. Matsu Musa actually shows up twice in the first two units. First, in 1.5, State Building in Africa. And if you follow the eight bitcoins, you can trace his famous pilgrimage to Mecca. And he shows up again in 2.4, the Trans-Saharan Trade Network. Now, Matsu Musa embodies the networks of exchange in three major ways. One, religion. This was a huge consequence of the Trans-Saharan trade route. With the intensification of trade along this trade route in the post-classical period, Islam played a larger and larger role. I mean, check out the Trans-Saharan trade route. It goes to one place, Dar al-Islam. In fact, Sub-Saharan Africa will join Dar al-Islam after the great empires there convert, starting with Ghana and continuing on to both Mali and the Songhai. And no one personifies the impact of Islam on Sub-Saharan Africa more than our MVP, Amansa Musa. As Mansa, or leader, he was a devout Muslim, and his pilgrimage is easily one of the most famous of all time. Two, trade. All of the trade being done by camel caravans across the largest desert on the planet was not to just see the desert. Once you've seen one desert, you've seen them all. Am I right? But gold and salt were valuable enough for people to continually make the arduous trek across the Sahara Desert in search of trade. And no one personifies the wealth and power that is associated with that trade more than our MVP, Amansa Musa. In 2019, Forbes magazine stated that Mansa Musa's control of the Trans-Saharan trade route made him worth around $130 billion, which makes him the Armout, the richest man of all time. Third, ideas. If you add the impact of Islam and the wealth of trade together, you get the 1324 pilgrimage of Mansa Musa to Mecca. You remember this in class because your teacher was probably like, oh, he spent so much money in gold in Egypt that he ruined their economy. But did your teacher mention that every Friday along the route he stopped and built a mosque and donated it to the people who live there? Or that on the way back he made a bunch of low interest loans to the people of Cairo so that he could help restabilize the economy there? Nah, your teacher just treated Mansa Musa like like some venture capitalist out to ruin others with his intense wealth. My man was just showing his wealth and power by trading like anyone else would, and yet everyone says he ruined economies. Take it easy on old Mansa Musa. Now the ideas part is when he returns to Timbuktu, he brings back scholars and architects, and they transform the city from just a trade city to also a cultural and intellectual center of Dar al-Islam. His wealth, the Islamic ties, and the knowledge that those ties brought literally put Mali on the map. Most famously in the 1375 Catalan Atlas, where the powerful Mansa can be seen holding the gold that made him the Armote. Before we move on to the early modern period, I figured now would be a good time to mention the people to know section of freemanpedia.com. I went and I compiled all the people that are either explicitly or implicitly mentioned by the College Board for the entire course, according to me. So scroll through there while you're reviewing to see how many faces you recognize. I'll bring this up again later on, but just here's something to look at while you're reviewing. Two units down, seven to go. Next up, Unit 3, the land-based empires. I'll see you tomorrow.